Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Once again, it is time for a bench press day, but a quick reminder for those of you who watch these videos, please remember to click like down below. We greatly appreciate it. All right, let's get right over into the training. Uh, I went with my normal classic bench press today. Pinkies on the rings, good pauses. Uh, went up to a 325 training max. It looked really good on camera. Um, it definitely felt heavy, but uh, when I did it, you know, I didn't feel like it was a grinder. So I had plenty in reserve. I had good control, good pause, right? Went up nice and smooth. Bar didn't really slow any way up. So I'm happy with that. We'll count that as just a nice solid training max. And after that, everything was very straightforward. My, my training right now is so simple. Uh, it really is just benching in rows and then we do some single joint exercises afterwards. So I did with supersetting it back and forth, a five by five on the bench press. Uh, tried to pause everything, so it went with 245, so obviously we had reps in reserve on every set. We just tried to get good pauses, good control, and just explode up as hard as I could on each rep after a good pause. Uh, dumbbell rows, I went up five pounds, and you know, part of me keeps wanting to go back and do barbell rows, but these just do so much for me. Uh, there's not really ego in it because you're not putting up any, any heavy weight. Nothing impressive about this lift, but I just really like the stretch that it gives because of the, the ranges of motion involved that we can get when we stretch at the bottom with a dumbbell, right? We just get that different stretch doing the one arm that we can't always achieve with a barbell. I do like moving the heavy weight on the barbell, but if I'm looking at purely just stacking meat onto my upper back, uh, middle back, improving grip, uh, making my forearms bigger, this is a difficult exercise to beat because we have to hold on to it all the way through. The grip training is, is good because there's no resets, there's nothing like that. And of course I'm not strapping up. So we, I get a good forearm pump and I feel like it trains my grip. But at the same time, I really get that lengthened position really effectively on this. And I just feel like you can get more of that with this than you can with a barbell. Because with a barbell, uh, you, you really can't always achieve the, the same thing. Okay, And that's one of the reasons we use dumbbells is that, that stretch that we can get. But I think definitely in this case, it wouldn't even be replicated the same way with a two-arm one. I prescribe those to clients. I've done those where you get up on like an inclined bench and do both of them at the same time. Even then, it doesn't quite seem to produce that same effect at that bottom position. Like, watch my lats when they spread. Watch my scapula come apart uh, when we do that one arm. It's just, it's a difficult thing to replicate. Uh, and I'm not saying it's, it's necessarily better because I built a pretty big back. Like, when people see me shirtless, my back is easily my biggest body part. It's bigger than my legs, like, proportionately. And, you know, I did tons of barbell rows. I mean, pull-ups and dumbbell rows and stuff played a little bit of a role here and there, but it was consistently years and years of barbell rows. However, I've kind of reached a point where I already have all that, that meat and thickness on my back. So when I'm going to do movements, I really do want to get that range of motion, get that lengthening effect, maybe cause some extra stimulus that I wasn't getting to the same degree over all those years. Uh, and it, it seems to be effective. I feel like my back uh, is still growing. Uh, it still feels like it's it's slowly making a little bit of gains maybe here or there. And uh, again, I like this exercise and it's easy to recover from. And the benching, uh, I went with five this time. I've been doing a lot of eight pluses, just trying to make sure we get that extra pet growth. But at the end of the day, I have to remember as long as the training volume is there, chest is gonna grow. It's gonna grow, and yes, we have some data suggesting that the higher reps may bias us a little more towards pecs than triceps, and as we get heavier and heavier, heavier meaning relative to your max, uh, the tricep activation goes up, but I could also say, well, we need triceps uh, to get strong as maxes, and I think fives are still a good middle ground there. They're good middle ground, uh, plus there's still a decent strength component to go with the maxes there. It's not that significant compared to the maxes, but I just, I like the fives from a programming perspective sometimes, uh, as long as you can recover from them. But in this case, because I'm not doing it to ego lift, I'm doing pause reps, everything controlled, I'm, I'm happy with it. And then of course, I'm gonna do additional tricep work. All right, we're gonna do additional tricep work there to go with all of it, uh, because we need that, and particularly in, in my case. Uh, 
so you know that's the thing we could argue that bench press is and and stop stop listening to bodybuilders on this who don't know anything the reason a lot of them their chest doesn't grow from the bench is they don't pause they don't bench correctly they bounce the weight off their chest okay that's that's a factor that aside uh, you know, you look at the data, bench press is one of the best chest builders. It's an okay tricep builder. But triceps play such a massive role in the max. So, of course, I'm going to do triceps behind it. Uh, and so what I did for my next two lifts, um, again, kind of going with something a little bit classic. I'm struggling to get this bar position where I want it. By the way, I really love these skull crushers. What I'm struggling with is the bar hitting the hooks. I really like being able to lay on a bench like this and use a straight bar uh, and not have to, to unrack it the same way. But the problem is I keep hitting the J-hooks. I may need to just go back to the easy curl bar. All right, it's, it's, I may need to do that because since it isn't working, I'm hitting the J-hooks way too often no matter what I do. I feel like it does compromise my bar path a little trying to achieve that. Uh, still, I felt the tricep activation was good. It's just on two of these sets, I hit the uprights. Uh, but again, we have good data on combining the bench press with a skull crusher. The tricep development, when you combine these two together, tends to be phenomenal, pretty much maximum uh, in the research. This is kind of why I say to people, when you start looking at something like the triceps, you're not having to do single joint movements for every head. That's silly. You look at it and say, okay, what, what does the bench press hit the hardest? And then how do we combine an extension in that's going to work the, the rest of the tricep more completely? And in this case, it's, it's a, you know, a skull crusher. And there's, good, there's been research on this, like looking at, at hypertrophy, looking at, at size, uh, strength, all these things, uh, with combining these together in different orders. Uh, and it is effective. It is a, an effective combination. And it's simple, though. You know, and people don't want to see that. A lot of other coaches out there don't want to see me putting simple stuff up. Yet I still get clients. I still get plenty of clients. So, uh, you know, I'm not that worried about it. People say, oh, you're doing some really simple programming. You can't just bench and do extensions. Well, sure you can. As long as you're rotating maxes and rotating movements just enough to avoid overuse. Yeah, you can, you can do that. But I'm still doing the conjugate style with the with the maxing. And then I did supersets on that with hammer curls. Uh, and I do like doing the straight bar curls. I do think they do a lot for biceps and biceps are arguably my worst muscle group just genetically. And you guys saw me hit those uprights again. But I think with hammer curls, I do like them because of the carryover to my, my big three, particularly obviously the bench press and the deadlift. So I'm gonna to tend to do those. I like that extra forearm development. I like the extra grip training while still working the biceps. It's a good combination. And again, this workout was done fast. Like this is a, a sub one hour workout that include warm up, ramping up to a max, everything else. This can be done inside of an hour, okay? And it's a, a complete upper body workout. Every single muscle in my upper body got very good hypertrophy stimulus, all right? The only thing we're looking here, people saying, well, shoulders, maybe not. But that's a point of contention as to whether benching and rows can maximize delt development is actually a debated point. But just to finish off, I did three sets of rows and these are or lateral raises, I mean, but they didn't take any time. Why? I did these 30 seconds apart. All right, I took a pair of 28 pound dumbbells, just stripped the weight down a little with, with uh, some 28 pound dumbbells here. And did three sets of 10. Took about 30 second breaks. Now the last two sets got really hard due to those short breaks. Like normally I've done these with 12s or more uh, with the same weight, but I didn't take the shorter breaks. I just wanted to get this workout done. And we just came in and just finished off the shoulders. You know, all three heads of the delt, still that emphasis on the, the side head, upper traps, all of that. And then called it a day. All right guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.